They rarely eat. They rarely sleep. They're very in a traumatic state right now. So it's not even just like, you know, how they're doing because they're not doing good at all. I mean, who would? What kid would? What child would? What parent would in that particular position? I, I have, over, I'm overwhelmed with emotions right now. Besides being traumatized by everything that happened and having to see those kids go through that, not only me, but those kids, I'm traumatized. Um, I'm not okay. I've got so many other different emotions going within my body right now. It's hard to explain. I guess trying to balance everything out. Like, you know, um, hearing a video, it's like you, you feel powerless. As a parent, you know, you, you try to protect your child at every cost. And those were my kids. And that particular moment, those were my kids. And I felt powerless. I felt dehumanized. And I couldn't protect them from anything that was going on. And it was all over mistake. I thought like one of us was going to seriously get hurt. One of the kids or are we going to get hurt because they came in with their guns strong. I felt like, you know, it, my life was flashing before my eyes. Like it's, it's very difficult to put yourself in that pot of racism that happened that in that it happened, but it, I had to put myself in that pot that I might not live another day. These kids might not live another day over a mistake. So I was taking the girls to um, have like a little Sunday fun day and we decided to go to the nail shop. Now when we had first got there, I didn't call the particular nail shop that was like, you know, down the street from the house. So we just pulled up in the parking lot, it, but it's the same parking lot as the art thrift store in McDonald's. And I had my niece go get out and check because, like I said before, I didn't call. So she went to go, she got out the car and went to go check and see, like, you know, if the nail shop was open. And she came back in the car and was like, no, it's not, it's not open. So, you know, I'm scrolling. I look down, scrolling through my phone, and I'm, like, you know, searching for other places to go. I find another place to go and I call it like, you know, hey, can you get four or five people in at this point? They tell me, yeah. So I was going to get ready to leave. But then before I did that, like, you know, I was just like, wait, give me a second. I put the car, like the car was already in park and I rolled the windows down and I turned the vehicle off. So then um, the kids was like, I just heard, I just seen a gentleman on my left side and he looked at me and he said something like, I'm going to record. And at first I'm just thinking like, I don't know what he's talking about, but okay, like, you know, go ahead, record with your life. But then like, you know, I put my head back down in my phone and, you know, my niece starts screaming and I'm telling her like, what's going on? What, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And she's like, the police. I said, okay, what about the police? She said, they're behind us. Well, they're probably just doing their like, um, some type of investigation. I'm not going to go looking or about there getting out the car to go look for anything that caused trouble. So she's like, no, they got their gloves drawn on us. And so I so happened to look out the window and like, you know, I yell out at the officer, why do you have your guns drawn? What is going on? He didn't respond. And then he like repeated, he's like, you know, everybody put their hands out the vehicle. So then out the windows and everything like that. So we all proceeded to do that. And then I don't know where he was just like, everybody now people start stepping out. So I was like, my niece started to get out. My eldest niece started to get out the vehicle. She opened the door. So I tried to reach for it. And I was like, no, you're not going nowhere. Like, you know, he hasn't told us. No one told us what's going on. We don't have, like, you know, he's not telling us what the reason he got his gun drawn. And you trying to get out the car. No, like, you know, he needs to tell us what's going on. So I yell out, like, you know, what's going on? He didn't respond. So then my niece starts screaming. I said, I said, 
you know what, I, I need you to calm down. And so she was like, no, auntie, she's like, I can't because, you know, it's another officer that got their gun drawn on me. So I said, okay, you know what, just forget it. Imani, get out the car, listen to what they say. They tell Imani to get out, then they go to my little sister, Nakaya. She then gets out, and then my niece, Teriana. But before she gets out, I'm telling my niece, Teriana, hey, get your phone, start recording. And so she was like, okay. So she pulled her hands back in from the window. And, like, you know, he started screaming and yelling, like, you know, get your hands out the window, get your hands out the window. So, you know, now I'm panicking.